Okay, you guys, I'm going to give you guys a little forward first on this episode. I'm fangirling out as we speak. I promise you this episode will not reek. Um, You're not going to go, whatever. You will maybe think to yourself, I know what you're thinking. Is this like a Noxzema commercial? But trust me, it's not. Uh, Today, we have the amazing... Uh, actress Elisa Donovan joining us. Amber from Clueless is here, and I'm fangirling out so much. We're going to get into it. We're going to be talking about what it was like working on Clueless, what it was like uh, revisiting her character of Amber for the Rakuten Super Bowl commercial that went crazy viral, and we're going to be talking about her book that is available now, Wake Me When You Leave, available in bookstores, and there's also an audio book. So, Guys, enjoy this episode. I loved every minute of it, and I know you will too. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Just Saying with Justin Martindale. I am joined today by the one, the only. She's an author. She's an actress. She's a mother. But more importantly, she is my new best friend, Elisa Donovan. (laughs) How are you? Hi, I'm doing well. You know, I did walk over here, which I, I was reminded once again that no one walks in Los Angeles. <laughs> we are staying not far from here. And uh, I thought, well, I'll just walk with my family. And as I mentioned, they got in my hair and got me very frazzled. So I left them behind. But um, <laughs> I did. It's I realized no one walks in L.A., but I'm happy that I walked like eight blocks. Well, I'm glad you did uh, today because the past couple of weeks you would have been swept out to sea. Oh my goodness. <sighs> what is happening? I don't right? know. It snowed. It's, <laughs> it's, I was on a I hike. Know. I was getting all these videos from friends snow. I'm like, this is just, it's so weird. I was on a hike insane. and like maybe a couple clouds in the sky mm-hmm. and, but blue and chilly. And then like snow flurries came down it's and I'm like, bananas. no, it is just crazy. Well, I want to say thank you for being here. It is an early morning. Um, We couldn't tape this at the Comedy Store today because the Chris Rock live uh, telethon is happening (laughs) this weekend. (laughs) So if you want to donate to Chris Rock, he really needs the help. (laughs) He Um, does. He really needs the resources. But um, I feel like I manifested this because a couple years ago... um, uh, Clueless celebrated its 25th anniversary. Yes. And which, how are we still 30? I have no I idea. Know. It's, it's a magical, <laughs> we're magical beings. I know. It's so <laughs> weird. And I remember we were, uh, I was doing this podcast and we were talking about Clueless and we're going to talk about Clueless because, I mean, because. And not. I was like, oh, I, I have to, I want to meet Elisa so bad because, um, you were my favorite in Clueless. Aww. Like I'm wearing a shirt right now with, you know, I, Sharon Dion yeah, on it. I notice it. not me, but that's not okay. Not you, but right. I always <laughs> identified as an Amber. And yeah. I still identify as an she, Amber. Me too, me too. My pronouns are he, him, it, <laughs> and, and Amber. And Amber. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, I feel like, okay, so this movie came out in 1995, directed by Amy Heckerling. The brilliant genius Amy Heckerling. And I actually watched it yesterday again just because oh, it's just, yes, it's just so, and it just still just lives up. Yes. To everything. Yeah, I think it does. I haven't seen it in a bunch of years now. I've only, I've seen it an embarrassingly low amount of times, uh, according to a lot of people. Really? I think I've only seen it three times. Or really? Like, the yes. whole time? Yes. Um, but we, I hosted a screening at uh, the Mondrian a few years back, and that was the first time I had seen it in, you know, many, many years. And I said to my girlfriend that I brought, I'm like, it really holds up. Like, this is a good movie. And it does. Said, yeah. That's why people keep watching yeah. it. Yeah. Well, and it's it's just, it's one of those movies that like back in the 90s was like such a thing because they took classic stories and like novels, literature, and, yes. and Clueless is yes. based off of Jane Emma. Austen's Emma. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so... When you're a kid and, you know, you have to read these books in school and like even in Clueless, it's like, oh, I had this quote. Where did you get it? Cliff Notes. Cliff Remember, notes. I was like, oh, yeah, Cliff Notes, like for sure. That's right. So it's like that was the thing. It's like, I don't want to read Emma. Let's just watch Clueless. It's the right. same thing. It's the same thing. Um, <laughs> but like I, I I, was watching it last night and I was just like, oh, my God, this still holds up. It's just a classic tale, but it's just done in Beverly Hills. And I remember being a kid in Texas 
and this movie came out and I remember being so obsessed with it and I'm going to, I'm, I'm, mind you, I was straight. Okay. In, I know. Hard to believe. In the past, past life. In 1995 and I went to a private school and I had a locker that I <laughs> turned into a clueless locker. Oh my gosh. In high school, like a freshman mm-hmm. and like open mm-hmm. the locker and there was like pictures of Alicia Silverstone. There was red beads uh-huh. and boas. <laughs> and boas. And boas. I love it. <laughs> And I dated girls. And you dated girls. Um, and they thought, gosh, she's got a great locker. She, <laughs> who's, <such> a great- <laughs> what female is uh, locker is this? I'm like, that's Justin's. Oh, okay, great. Oh, mm-hmm. And now, I mean, I'm trying to even comprehend, like, what was that like? Like, well, how did you audition for this role? Like, how did it come into play? Because yes. I want to get into, like, the good, juicy, the, like, uh, So deets. I had just moved from New York and where I had, was in acting school in college and moved to LA. And within a couple of weeks, I got a job in this sitcom, Blossom. Mm-hmm. Do you remember uh. with Joey Lawrence and, and mm-hmm. Mayim uh, Bialik? And uh, so they loved the chemistry between Joey and I. I was playing like his love interest. So they wrote me in to another episode. And at the same time, I was auditioning for Clueless. But I kept going in. I mean, the audition process was lengthy. Really? For me, yes. I, I mean, I think I went in like seven times, six times. And, you know, you start first with the casting director, then the casting director and maybe one of the producers, then a few of the producers, then down the line in the end, it was the first time I think I had been on the Paramount lot, Mm -hmm. which is so intimidating because it's such an old Hollywood lot and Mm -hmm. it's so beautiful and there's so much history there. And I remember going, feeling like if I don't, like if I can just park my car, I, if I can just not hit something or do, I was so nervous and um, went to Scott Rudin's office and it was Scott and Amy. I think the last time I read was for Scott and Amy and Twink Kaplan, who was one of the producers as mm-hmm. well. And, and misguised. Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they, you know, those situations are rarely pleasant. I mean, the audition process is like the one of the worst things and it has really nothing to do with acting on a set. So it's, it's just always pretty painful. Yeah. <laughs> um, but in this instance, you always remember the times when it's pleasant because they are respectful and Amy is so warm and, you know, you, you, you felt as though they wanted you to succeed as opposed to wanting you to prove that you can't do it, you mm-hmm. know? Um, so it was a, lengthy and then I was flying home to see my family in New York and then I found out when I got home that I got the job and I was ecstatic and, and I had to stop doing Blossom which was beat it Blossom yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry yeah. I'm gonna be in a pop culture yeah. like iconic movie <laughs> um did you originally go in for Amber yep yeah mm-hmm. so she was the one yep. I don't think that, that I read for anyone else I think I think it was oh yeah I think it was always Amber mm-hmm. and was there like a chemistry test with Alicia they and did, Stacey? Um, they, we did a hair and makeup test uh-huh. after we were all cast. And um, that's when they cut my super short bangs. And because I had like long, just very girly hair. Mm. And um, they just wanted her to have, you know, more of an edge to her. So uh. they cut the heavy short bang. I remember going to my agent's office afterwards and they were like, who? Who are you here to see? You know, I was like, it's me. I, am. <laughs> I just have surprise. surprise. <laughs> I have bangs now. Yeah. <laughs> that is so wild because I, I feel like, and I don't know what it is. I just remember like just watching Clueless and just for me, just the comedic relief. Like you feel yes. so bad for Amber because she's trying so hard I to know. fit in. I, and she I, really is. She wants to be liked. <laughs> she, But she is liked. Right. Because at the beginning, you guys are all like, you know, hanging out by the pool and I laughing know. and you all go to the same parties. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But then everyone's just kind of so mean Yeah. Her. She's like the friend that you have, but you're not really sure why you still hang out with them. Yeah. And then that's why in the, the, when we did the series, it became, well, we to figure out like what is amber like we have to incorporate her more because Mm -hmm. she's really i was in the show a lot more and they had to figure out how to 
navigate that of this person who and then you like learn more about her family oh so her her parents are not that great to her you know you kind of get all the 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 origin story yes the origin story of amber yeah that's what we need (laughs) i mean and also she was just she would she's that friend in high school i feel like she would have your back and tell it to you like it is. Yes. And I mean, yes. that's the, yeah. I think that everybody needs what, and she was so, uh, I, the parts of her that I identify with are the nonconformist. Like she's doing her own thing. 1,000%. She is, and also she is like, her wardrobe <laughs> expresses how she feels and what her commentary is for the day. You yeah. Know? I think so, she had the best fashion oh, out of the entire doubt. thing. That was really, really fun. That became such a, because obviously you go through lengthy fittings and they the Mona May and Lisa Evans who did the costumes were extraordinary but it would they would always be building on it so mm-hmm. I would have the fitting and they'd have the outfit and then they would say oh wait we need to add like an extra this or do something with the hair and incorporate so it was always building on what they had already created and mm-hmm. we laughed so hard like we had so much fun <laughs> did it you really have a favorite was... outfit from the <laughs> from um, the movie I don't know which one. I loved the military one. I don't even remember if it that was in the movie because there are so many things that then get cut with uh-huh. the outfits. And Bill Pope, the um, the DP, the cinematographer, who was so wonderful, who also shot the commercial that we just shot. So that was yes, a, yeah, we'll a get into that in a minute. Thing. But he would always be trying to get, even if I didn't have lines in the scene, he would be saying, "All right, just get like." scoot over a little more so that we're <laughs> seeing you because it's so amazing what she's wearing, you know? Yeah. And I mean, that's, I feel like just the fashion alone, the hair extensions when, oh gosh. when, uh, Ty <laughs> comes to school, the, the infamous, like my balls can't fly yeah. at my face. <laughs> there goes your social life. So many like innuendos that like as yes. a teenager, like just went right mm-hmm. over my head. Mm-hmm. Like, Christian being gay, like, didn't even, I was like, oh, he likes Spartacus. What's that about? Right. <laughs> but she called it Sporadicus or something yes, like that. Right. That's right. <laughs> so, yeah. so, I mean, just, and, and again, that honesty in the classroom, we were like, hello, was I the only one listening? <laughs> I thought it was Like her raped. outrage where she's like, I actually did the assignment. Uh, I did the research. <clears throat> this Yahoo is uh-huh. just not even, like, why does everyone like her? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you have one of the best. My favorite moment in the entire movie is when you guys are at the Valley Party and you guys, you and Alicia, (laughs) you and Cher are walking into the party and she accuses you of wearing the dress she wore yesterday. Right. And she said, and you said like, I would ever shop at Judy's. And she says, are you a fashion victim or, or, or something else? And you don't even say anything. You just literally just look at her and go, ah, yeah. And just walk away every time for the past 27 years. You're, that you... part just cracks me <laughs> up. She now, was so fun. When that came out, like, were you guys, I mean, what a what a weird time and crazy time, I would think, like, in the 90s on Sunset in Los Angeles. Like, what, what was that like? It just... was, I mean, it was bizarre. Mm-hmm. But also, I... I you know, I don't know anything different. I didn't know anything different. I felt like we did this great movie, and I could tell when we we went to a test screening, Alicia, Paul, Justin, Donald, and I, and um, we sat in the back, you know, before the film opened, so it's a a test audience of, you know, the target age Mm -hmm. people, and we sat in the back, and I went, oh my gosh, Alicia, you're going to be very famous, you know? I said, this is a really good film and it's super fun and really intelligent and so everything changed very quickly Mm -hmm. like it was it was amazing you know I think now there are there's just so much more content and so many films and television shows to watch that you can you can be doing a show for five years and no one half of the country hasn't seen it because they've been watching the other 400 shows you know where I think at that time these these projects made such an imprint on people and Like, everyone saw that movie, except for my husband, just for the record. What? Still? My husband still has not seen it. And now he's, I'm like, it's fine. <laughs> we've moved on. Be, yeah, we've moved on. <laughs> we've moved on. We've let it wow. go. Wow. Yeah. But kind of hot, right? You know? Yeah, oh, you haven't seen know. my movie? Yeah, yeah, he hasn't. No. When we met, he said, uh, you know, what do you do? And I said, oh, I work in entertainment. 
oh, okay, like, what do you, on what, well, yeah, I'm, you know, an actress, and oh, I, you know, what have you been in, anything that I've seen, and I said, I mean, maybe, <laughs> you know, and then I said, this movie, Clueless, and he said, oh, yeah, I haven't seen that, and then I said, oh, I did this other movie called A, a Night at the Roxbury, mm-hmm. he said, yeah, no, I haven't seen that, and then I started to be like, hey, guess what, like, I have a real career, yeah, like, I'm like, you. people like me, and I've been doing this for a long time, and I was, like, rattling off all the things that I had done. And then I said, oh, I also, you know, years ago did Beverly Hills 90210. And he went, oh, Ginger. 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 Like he knew the name of my character. Yeah. And I went, you guys, like all of his college buddies, they would watch 90210. Ginger LaMonica. Oh yes. <laughs> I mean, if that's just not a Beverly Hills exactly. 90210 name. <laughs> Here comes oh, Ginger LaMonica, everyone. Ginger. She's a ballsy one also. Yeah. Now, yeah, let's get into this. You just had a, a huge uh, Super Bowl commercial that just came <laughs> out uh, for Rakuten. Am I saying it right? Rakuten? Rakuten. I just like to roll the I like that you're making it far Rakuten. fancier and perhaps a little more spicy than it is. Uh, Rakuten. Uh-huh. Yes. And you were with Alicia again mm-hmm. uh, in um, uh, Mr. Hall's classroom. Yes. Um, doing the debate scene. What, I mean, what was that like? Especially like coming in with like a whole bunch of, you know, Gen Z kids. Right, right. That was honestly, I mean, I keep saying it was surreal because it really was to be, to revisit those characters as grownups, first mm-hmm. of all. And then to feel like it was not even remotely difficult for mm-hmm. me to get back into that character and the same for Alicia and I'm looking it over at her going like I can't like what are we doing here? like out of body experience oh, yes. yeah for sure and then Bill behind the camera and he was so funny when I walked on set he's like geez you haven't changed your clothes in 30 years you know like he was like, it was very funny and uh it was really fun it was and it was such a perfect marriage because Rakuten is a shopping app mm-hmm. and it curates all of the stores and then you get money back for shopping which is I mean who doesn't love that? Who doesn't want that? I yeah. mean, Amber would have been all over that. Yeah. So uh, it just seemed like the perfect, it was super clever and like just the great, a great marriage. Yeah. I remember when I think uh, they released the first images of like Alicia and then everyone's like, oh my God, there's going to be like a share. There's going to be like a coolest yeah. reboot. Oh my God, it's happening. Would you thought, do one? Everybody thought it was going to be a I know. I mean, something. that's what, because they're talking about doing like uh, <clears throat> Mean Girls to like have them all come back. Oh, yes. And I was like, maybe we do. Like, can we do like you a know, coolest it's reboot? It's really up, obviously up to Amy mm-hmm. Heckerling. And I think she has been approached so many times to do that. And I, I, I don't, I don't know how she, I haven't seen her in uh, a bunch of years, but I know that historically, I think she felt like it was so perfect the Mm -hmm. way it was that I, I, I think she hasn't necessarily wanted to do that. And even the series, you know, we did the series for three years and uh, many of us from the film and Amy was a showrunner for the first year. And I think that it's just like television was not her medium. Mm -hmm. And I think she didn't enjoy it and she wasn't happy with, and then she turned it over to, um, Tim O'Donnell, who really is a, a half hour TV guy, and he was terrific. But I feel like it just wasn't her thing. And maybe they did a the Broadway show also um, for a short time. Oh, the like uh, unauthorized? But, was that the unauthorized one? Well, I think one? I the, remember the they musical? wanted, they asked, like invited me to come to the, I couldn't, I couldn't go. But uh, so I don't, I don't think it was a full run, but I do think that Amy was involved in that mm-hmm. because I don't know how. Um, I think she would have to be because it was so, yeah probably yeah I think she would have to be there should be definitely like a clueless on Broadway but I mean I think we would all do it if if Amy you know wanted to for sure and yeah. so yeah because you I read somewhere that the the it was originally supposed to be a TV series that could have just been clickbait I don't know but then they um, ended up doing the movie and then it went to the TV show that sounds familiar mm-hmm. I feel like that could be accurate and it's that, so, right so then when we did the series it was like she just went back to kind of what like the high, I, like during familiar. the high school yeah yes i'm not sure but that sounds like that could be right but without alicia silverstone in it right right in the series was that yes. weird i mean yeah that's so long ago it's hard yeah. to tell but uh, yes i think it was hard for rachel who is lovely and yeah. uh, beautiful and looks so much like alicia um those are very tough shoes to fill you know but um 
we had a great time on the series. It was hilarious. Yeah. I mean, we really had a, a good time. But. I actually have a really funny story about that show. Oh, really? Yeah. Because Tell I don't me. know if you remember this or not, <laughs> but um, there was an episode where there was a young boy um, who you have a scene with. And at the end of the scene, he says, I, th- I think it's like he has a crush on you, on Amber. He has a crush on Amber's character. And he says, like, oh, well, maybe when I'm a little older, I'll hit you up. And you look at him, and you, Amber's character knows that he is going to be gay. And, and, right. And, and, and Amber says, mm, I don't think so, kid. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and now that kid has grown up. Yes. And is one of my best friends. Blake, Blake. right? Blake, yep. Oh, my God. I remember this so... I reached out to him because he he's partners with uh, Emerson, right? Yeah, Emerson, so yeah. So I know them. Emerson and I went to school together as well. I know? I know them through... Um, not through Tom Sestaro, but um, who, Scott Nevins. Oh, yeah, Scott. And Scott, I know through Tom. And so I met them at, like at a Christmas a holiday thing mm-hmm. a bunch of years ago. And then... As time went on, I went, wait a second. (laughs) I know this guy. And I found like there was a Polaroid that I had of him. And he like had my wig on or uh, Oh, probably. Yeah. And uh, (laughs) oh my God, it was amazing. And I just went, this is incredible. Because I remember that episode so clearly. Uh It was so much fun. And I remember thinking, I'm like, this is not a straight person. And you know, it's... Which is which is so great, right? Yeah. And I think his dad or his parents mm-hmm. all cool. Yeah. They're all cool yeah. with it, right? Bill and I remember, Susie, yeah. I remember whichever I don't recall if it was his dad or his mom that was there because you had to probably have his somebody. mom, big stage um, mom. And they were so whoever was there was just you know she seemed more. I guess it was his mom that was there. Mm-hmm. I remember thinking because we I've worked with a lot of kids and sometimes you just go oh God bless this <laughs> child like. <laughs> These parents are gonna ruin their oh life, oh you know? for sure. Um, and I didn't feel that way about his <laughs> his I grown mean, up. That he was, was there. little. I mean, he's he still was so into it. He it was so clear how much he loved performing mm-hmm. and uh, yeah. He still he does. It. Like he got to start on Star Search. Went to Full House. Yes. He was in the Little Rascals. Right, right. And then and then you outed him on national television. <laughs> so because <laughs> he was like Amber she knew. <laughs> She knew. Um, that's so funny. Okay. Well, let's get in. You have a book. Yes, I want to talk about the book. I actually want to read this book because it just sounds fantastic. Um, it's called Wake will. Me Up. Wake Me When You Wake Leave. Wake Me When You Leave. Mm-hmm. Um, came out last June. Sold out in three days on Amazon. Mm-hmm. Huge the accomplishment. The first day on Amazon. And then it, but you know, then it. Okay, humble brag. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's available. Please it's don't avail- buy it. Yeah. What, now, what was, what was this? What was it like? Were you just like, I'm just going to write a book or like? No. So basically my whole life fell apart and then a lot of really bad stuff happened and then I got through it and then I wrote a book. Okay. So. (laughs) The long and short of it. Tale as old as time. Uh, Yeah. Tale as old as time. No. uh, When we were doing Sabrina, Mm -hmm. um, the show was canceled, which. I think everybody was fine with that. Like we were sort of done. And and then you go into pilot season and I thought I was going to just go right on to another series. And I didn't. And then the relationship ended with the person I thought I was going to marry. And then my dad got cancer. Ugh. And so all three of these things happened like boom, boom, boom. And I went from having this life where I had everything that I wanted and to nothing making sense anymore. And so everything was sort of pulled, you know, the rug was pulled out from under me. And I went through this whole period of grief, obviously, in in my dad's passing. And it happened very quickly. He was Mm. diagnosed and then he died within five months. Oh, gosh. It was really intense. And the process, you know, it was anybody knows who's who has gone through a terminal illness with someone. It gets it's a very painful process. But he in particular was really angry and did not want to like was unrelenting in his um you know commitment to staying alive when he was clearly not going to make it so it was a really challenging time for our my family and um I just went into this period where he I had these dreams where he came to me after he passed in these visitation dreams which are very different from regular dreams and it helped me to one really heal through my 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 
grief and also really ha- helped me to reevaluate what I wanted to do with my life. Like, what do I really want to do? Mm-hmm. Do I want to keep being an actress? Do I want to live here? Do I, what, how do I want to spend my time? And I really recalibrated and mm. I have always been a writer. And so, um, I really started writing as more of like a therapeutic thing for myself. And then it turned into, oh my gosh, I want to write a book. And I wanted to write the book. It started as a book years ago. Mm -hmm. And then people said, well, you're a performer. You should do it as a play. Or So I wrote it as a one-woman show, and I did it at the Geffen, at the Audrey Skirball, as a benefit. And it was this overwhelmingly positive response. And in that moment, I realized, oh, this is like the kind of stuff that I want to do. This is what I want to do. I want to touch people in this way Mm -hmm. and have them have that experience of laughing and crying and sharing their stories. And so, you know, knowing they're not alone, knowing that you're not alone. Yes. But then, you know, when you tell your agent, I'd like to (laughs) tour a play, Mm. just me Mm -hmm. around the country. They were like, can I please get a witness? Like, can we just, can we just get back to doing a TV show? You know, I'm like, uh, sure, but I want to do. So it just, I really shifted my entire focus. And then I started to write the book and then I got the book deal and, and the film I had written, uh, written it as a film as well. That was, we were trying to kind of get um, financing, but then the book deal came first and now the film is in development officially um, that I'm going to direct. You're directing yes. it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, what? Yeah, it, yeah. I mean, that's so. I, I can't even imagine. Like, okay, well, I'm writing this book, and then ah, there yes. you go. <laughs> well, it is a weird. There was this moment when I realized, oh, people are going to read this book. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, because it's very personal, and um, but that was really my intention that. It's so isolating when we're going through these kinds of challenges, grief in particular, but, and it's such a specific experience for everyone, but there is this commonality that you, it needs to be shared with other people, you know, because mm-hmm. you can feel so isolated. And I, that period of time, I felt like nobody knows what to say, so they don't say anything. They act like it's not happening, which is the worst thing to do. Because they just bury it all yes. down. Yeah. And then you feel delegitimized. You feel like you're crazy for being so sad, you know, or being so incapable of functioning. Mm-hmm. And um, so it became really important to me to be, to share that kind of intimacy and mm-hmm. also because it's also very funny. Like the book is very funny too, because we're, I mean, life is funny and death is sometimes funny. It's like horrible and it's weird and it's extraordinary. And sometimes it's funny, you know, are you, are you, or do you consider yourself a spiritual person? Oh, for sure. Yes. Like uh, holistic and whatnot. Yes. Or like, so very... I would say I was raised Catholic uh-huh. and I, even in college when I was uh, living in New York city, I would get up, in the mornings and go, I was living in the West Village and I would go to the this little chapel on Houston and like pray with the nuns. Now, I did not believe in, I was no longer Catholic per se uh-huh. because I did not believe in what they were selling, you know? Right, right, right. I mean, I have a gay brother and when I, you know, understood at 16 or 17, I went, oh, so he's not okay. Like he can come in here, but he's a sinner. Like his life is, is ruined. Is not, yeah, is banish ruined. him to the shadows. Yeah, I went, yeah, this doesn't make any sense. But I really wanted that uh, spiritual sort of connection. So I would still go with the nuns, and it was nice because no one talked. So it wasn't like they were. <laughs> it wasn't like they were saying to me, "Yeah, get your gay brother in here yeah. so we can help." You know, no one uh, loves a chatty nun. Nobody you loves know? a chatty nun. Mm-mm, mm-mm. <laughs> so I think from that time, I've always been. My spiritual life has been evolving and I've studied some Buddhism and that like I, that's probably the closest to any kind of organized religion that I uh, would subscribe to but this whole experience was for sure a, a spiritual experience for me where it, it changed my whole life mm-hmm. you know and um, it for the absolutely for the better and uh, so that part of it you know I really came to this understanding that when someone dies they don't leave us. No, never. They are just in another 
dimension in another way. Like I feel very close to my dad and more so than when he was alive, which if really? somebody had told me that, I would say that they were crazy. But well, because we were such different people. I mean, he was like an executive at AT&T. He did not understand what I did. You know, every month it was like, OK, so you've been doing this like hobby <laughs> and you're not what? famous yet. So like, let's get oh. real. You uh-huh. know, Like, let's get a real job. Let's go to school for. And then I said, no, I want to go to college. I want to go to college to be an educated actor. And he was like, God, help me. <laughs> you yeah. know? Like he, so we we just didn't really under he didn't understand me. And I felt like so much of that last period of his his life was me wanting to remedy that to feel like now we're going to understand each other you know we're going to have that great moment where he's on his deathbed and he tells me how much he understands who I am and I let all that like no we had none of that we didn't get any of that you know but after he passed I feel like I have that now like Mm -hmm. I have this understanding that through the dreams that I've had but also just from kind of going through this grief process and understanding more about it that I really do feel that he understands me and he's so proud of me now, you know? And uh, so it's, it it was revelatory for me. Yeah. You mentioned visitation dreams Mm -hmm. and I was like, what? Mm -hmm. I have visitation dreams too. Really? Yeah. It's weird. Wait, really? Mm -hmm. So you know what I'm talking about? I know exactly what you're talking about. And it's totally different than a dream. It's not that like, oh, it feels like I'm awake. No, it's like, oh, I'm just in another, I am having a, like it's the most saturated feeling. And yeah, it's like a saturated, like honest feeling. Like there's no like, like, you know, I've had them with my grandmother. I've had them with um, somebody that I was really close to like over a past, like the past decade. Mm. And and some change who mm-hmm. passed away in uh, 2021. Um, oh, I'm sorry. And yeah, like I'm just kind of like I'll be in the dream and then all of a sudden like they'll pop in and it's mm-hmm. not like a remorse or like a, oh, what could I have done or anything? Right. It's just kind of like, hey, <laughs> yes, what's going on? Yeah. It's just like we just pick up where we left off. And, right. But there's no like, and now a warning. No, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it feels very... Uh, uh, it just, it's, it's incredible. Mm-hmm. Like when you know when you're having one <clears throat> and when you're not, it's, it's amazing. Mm-hmm. It's really, really powerful. And has this experience uh, helped you with your daughter? Like how to. Yes. So like, she's super intuitive, first of all. Which, yeah. And she, she's 10 years old and. Um, Scarlet? She, Scarlet. Scarlet is her name. And when she was maybe. Uh, four was when I first started to write the um, the uh, the film version of this, mm-hmm. and I had gotten uh, connected with a producer who is still the the actual producer now. Um, and we had thought he thought that we had the financing like immediately, and he said this is so unusual. This like never happens like this. This will be the first time in the history of my career that something has come together so quickly. And then, of course, it didn't come together, right? And I got the call that it didn't, that it had fallen through. And I started crying. And she was sitting at the counter with me. And she was just looking at me. <laughs> and then I'm like, no, it's OK. And she didn't know what I was, she didn't know what I was talking about, who I was talking to. What you were going she, through. Right. Yeah. <laughs> she went into the kitchen drawer. In the back of the drawer was a watch that was my dad's that I have kept. And I just never knew what to do with it. And we had just moved into this place. And I put it in the kitchen drawer. She just opened the kitchen drawer, took it out, and she was like, here, do you want this? And I started, and I just went, oh. And she had no idea? No, no. She just, and I am telling you, I've had a psychic tell me various things about her that my dad, like, held her before she was, you know, her soul was given to me, and... I mean, this is the other thing. You're going to love my book, by the way. Yes, I want to read it. My mom is hilarious, and she's very uh, very flighty and up here, mm-hmm. and then will say these, like, devastating things. Like, she, you know, left me a mess. I was driving to L.A. from San Francisco, and she's like, oh, you know, just call, called me back, and she said, oh, I knew there was something I forgot to tell you. <laughs> she's like, this psyche that we talked to. So she said that, 
you know, she held Scarlet, that that your dad held Scarlet before she was given to you. And then she's like telling me all this stuff. And I'm like, what? I'm like driving <laughs> off the side of the freeway. Like what? She said, what? And she's like, oh yeah, it was real great. You know, like see you soon. Like chatting, you know, like she's very, Click. yes. Like she does crazy things like that all the time. Um, but my daughter is really in tune with all of that. And I've said to her, you know, she just, she is very connected to all of that. Mm-hmm. And I said to her, um, do you ever, because another psychic said to me, she is, she is very connected and she talks to your dad and she talk, and she said, you need to allow her to know that it's okay, that it's, this is, it's okay to do this. So I said to her one day, you know, do you, um, do you ever talk to grandpa Jack? And she like looked at me like this out of the corner of her eye as if I was going to like, say something bad she's about in trouble it. Or yes, something? Yeah. yes. And she said, sometimes. And I said, that's great. You know, it that's you can always talk to him and I talk to him too. And you know, she it's it's confusing for mm-hmm. a child, right? And we have a very dear friend who um very tragic tragically lost a child mm. in, two years ago and Scarlet is very connected to this boy, and she did not really know him. We know the parents. She did not really know him in this life, but she is like, I. she asks me all of these questions, like, how do you know if you're talking to the spirit and they're telling you the truth? Like, she's super dialed in, mm-hmm. and it's – so I just talk to her. You know, we talk about our dreams all the time, and um, – you know, and then also then she'll be like, and now I'm going to go play soccer. You know, like it's very, <laughs> it's sort of a, so we normalize it. Yeah. I normalize it for her so that she feels supported. Um, but I think sometimes it's overwhelming for her because not everybody, it's not like she's going to school and they're talking about this at school, you right. know. Um, so it can be a lot, I think. But it's also, it's just great that you can talk to your kids. Imagine that. Yes. Ima- Talking Please. to your children. Amen, right? <laughs> educating your children. Yeah, oh. imagine that. That's we so, well, I'm glad that she's like like comfortable with it and she's not like, whatever, you know? Yeah, <laughs> so like, like, and that's, and that's, that's such a like special thing. Yeah. And it's like I when you can is. embrace that at an early age and, yep. you know, tell a kid like, hey, it's okay. Like sometimes you'll... You'll feel things and like you'll get like little sensations. And I was the same way. My mom did the same thing with me when I was a kid. And it's kind of made me aware to like different, you know, elements. Like sometimes I'll like think, and I'm not like saying like, I'm a psychic, I'm a medium, you know, but I'm just like, I can see something or like, like a breeze will hit me and I can just be like, gotcha. I can, you know, I I see you. Like I had a moment where I I went camping and it was this camping spot that my friend and I always went to, the one that passed. And we got there really early to like claim the spot. Mm-hmm. And we were really nervous because there were people already there. And we were like, oh, what if they're not leaving that day? Whatever. And there was just this hummingbird mm-hmm. that just like. The hummingbirds. Just sat there. Like not even like a hummingbird's like. This one was just suspended like a drone and was just like looking at us. And we were like, hi. And like, and then like. Then the people came up from the camping spot and they're like, oh, yeah, we're leaving right now. Do you guys want, you know, if I want to bring right. stuff down? And we were like, that was our friend telling yes. us like, hey, we got it. It's we cool. Got it. It's so weird. Hummingbirds are. It's so that is 100 percent. My dad shows up as a hummingbird, as does our friend's little boy. And any time the whole time I was doing press for the book, a lot uh-huh. of it was on Zoom. So I was doing it in at my desk and outside of the window. <clears throat> we had just moved into this house. Um, is this beautiful tree mm-hmm. and but it's like high up mm-hmm. you know it's on the second floor but the floor is high so it's like it, with a bedroom it's, it's just high up and anytime I was doing press like the the hummingbird would come and sit and the same thing like just sit there really yep and then but and then if I would ever bring it up like oh my dad would come it's like he would fly away like he's like laughing going nope I'm not gonna you know I'm not gonna be your uh uh, Don't point me out. Exactly. <laughs> this yeah. is for you and you alone. So, and I and there was an, another. Um, it happens so much. The hummingbirds are really. Are, I I feel like are the messengers. Oh yeah, for sure. For Little yeah. magical things, yes. aren't they? Yes. But it's. Yes. I want to go back to your daughter because this was uh, really funny because it was. I think. I think you had posted this. Mm-hmm. How. 
You had to keep the Super Bowl commercial. Oh yes, under wraps. <laughs> yes, and they put it at Us Weekly in the interview. Yeah. Yes. What happened with so that? she? So first of all, you know anybody? You're always trying to make yourself seem cool to your kids, and yeah. it's like an impossibility. And um, <laughs> so she had said to me another little psychic thing a year ago. Why can't you get a job with Rakuten? Because Rakuten is the main sponsor for the Golden State Warriors, the basketball team. And okay. we are huge Warrior fans. My daughter's super into sports. And her favorite player is Clay Thompson. Like all, And I said, Rakuten, because that's not, it's like a digital shopping company. Like, I don't, that's not what I do. And she's like, well, can't you just get a job with them? And I said, no. And I'm like, and meanwhile, I do some pretty cool stuff. Like, if you, if you know. <laughs> You're like, let me tell you about Hollywood, Yeah, kid. let me tell you about Hollywood. <laughs> and uh, so... Then, lo and behold, this in the fall, they uh, call me and, you know, they uh, uh, make the offer, et cetera, et cetera. And I told her, well, guess what? I'm going to be doing a commercial for the Super Bowl. So being associated with the Super Bowl, super cool to her. Yeah, good. And with Rakuten, and I knew, I'm like, we, I, hopefully they will get us to a game or, you know, do something special. So she was ecstatic about this. And I said, but you can't, you can't tell anyone because we all had to sign NDAs, et cetera. Um, so I said, don't tell anybody at school. Like, I'll, I'll tell you when you can, but it won't be till like January. And so she said, okay. And then she came home from school and she said, so I told, I didn't tell anybody. I just said, my mom is doing something, but I can't tell you what it is because it's illegal. <laughs> and I was like... <laughs> Okay, so now I'm in the pickup line and all the parents are like, Scarlett's mom is a criminal. You know, like, I knew she was weird and now we She's know She's selling why. dope. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, that's not quite what I said. <laughs> Wait, were people, yeah. did like the school like no. call you? Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. No, but she just, you know, and kids talk and then they're all like, oh, Scarlett's mom. Oh, okay. Scarlett's mom's doing something illegal. Yeah, she might be in prison. <laughs> you know? <laughs> She sounds like an awesome kid. She's the greatest. Ugh. She really is. She's a super cool, really kind kid. Like she has she has a really good heart and she's smart and she definitely is on her own program, mm -hmm. which I love so much because that's <laughs> what um, I was like and am like in many uh, ways. So yeah, she's awesome. Oh, that's great. Now, um, yeah, so she's she's ten. Mm -hmm. uh, this came out, or Clueless came out. Let's see, when I was fifteen. Yeah, so um, she hasn't seen it yet. She still hasn't seen it. No, no one has seen this I mean, movie. She's, no one has seen. Am this I movie the in weirdo? Am I just like in the shirt and just like <laughs> yes? No. Yeah. Goodness, you are not alone. No, sir. Do you still <laughs> keep in touch with the cast or only like, with Donald? He's the only one, with Donald. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, uh, he and I are friends, and we we communicate. But I hadn't seen Alicia. Um, there's always you know uh, something, some yeah. anniversary, some and um, one year the film opened the LA Film Festival, and I feel like that might have been the last time that I saw her. And I had my daughter. I think my daughter was maybe two or three. And um, before that, we did a, a, a photo shoot for Entertainment Weekly. But I think that that was before. That was like the reunion special yes, one? Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. I mm -hmm. love those episodes or those issues. That was fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, like, the the soundtrack alone is just awesome. I mean. I know. It's so good. Kids in America. I mean, yep. rolling with the homies. <laughs> oh, like, so iconic yeah. and it's just such a great movie and it was so wonderful having you and um, this is I'm, so fun I i'm glad it. thank you again for coming in and i can't wait to read your, read your book i think you're really going to appreciate it yeah and i want given what you've said i think you will i'm totally down it's wake me when you leave make sure to get a copy of it mm -hmm. wherever books are sold yes. and, and i can't wait the audiobook i There's read a... i read the audiobook so okay cool you want to hear my voice for a couple of hours yes <laughs> <laughs> Hello, <laughs> Elisa Donovan, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. This was super fun. Good. Thank I'm you. glad. And we'll see you next time on Just Saying with Justin Martindale. Bye.